and welcome to Girls Game Shelf. Today I get to tell you all about this addicting little game called Cristallo, which is a solo game where you are on a mission to free these six magical creatures from an evil dragon. And you're going to do that by puzzling together these cavern cards to form crystal sets that light up these magical orbs, thus freeing each creature one gem at a time. So let's quick look at how to set up the game. First you're going to find your six magical creatures and adorn them with these little gems right here, which are more like shackles because you have to take them off the animal in order to free them, but they're very pretty. Then find the two dragon cards in the deck and put those aside. You're gonna need that if you make it to phase two. That's right, if you make it. You're also going to need nine other cavern cards. Don't look at them, that's a secret. That's all for phase two. After that, place your first cavern card in the middle of the table and you're all ready to play. On a side note, you're gonna to wanna to give yourself plenty of table space for this game because it has quite a large footprint when you get going. Now that you're all set up, this is how you play. Like I said, you're going to be trying to create different crystal sets by puzzling these cards together. To place a card, there's only a couple of rules. Rule number one, you have to place a crystal next to another crystal. The second rule is that once you place a card down, you can't move it. That gets frustrating. And lastly, if you already have a crystal set that's been made, you can't place a card on top of it that would cover that set, unless you wanna get rid of the orb that you've just earned. Since your goal is to create a crystal set, let's talk about what that is. When you finally form a crystal set, it will look like this. There are three crystals forming a legal combination in order to activate the orb in the fourth space. Now to activate that orb with the correct formation of crystals, you have a couple of options. These crystals have two defining traits, their shape and their color. Your crystals can either all be the same color and the same shape, or the same color and a different shape, or the same shape and a different color, or a different shape and a different color. Was that confusing? It might have been. Let me explain it to you in an easier way. Each individual trait needs to either be all the same or all different. So for example, you couldn't have two orange crystals with one red crystal. That would be blasphemous and it would not look as pretty. They either all have to be orange or they have to be orange, red, and lavender. And honestly, once you start playing, it really becomes second nature and you don't need to think about it so much. But just in case you get a little confused, there's this handy dandy cheat sheet to help you out. Now, so we went over the rules for how you place a card and what a crystal set is, but the most addicting part of this game to me is how you're able to place the card. You can place this card pretty much anywhere you want as long as you're not breaking any of the rules. You can put it off to the side, you can turn it around, you just gotta follow those rules. You keep playing this way until you have freed all of the animals. And if you get to that point, then you can set up for phase two to try and trap the evil dragon. You'll take all of your leftover cards that you didn't use and add that to the stack of nine that you set aside earlier. Then you'll clear all of your cards and the crystals from them in order to make way for the dragon. Turn over the dragon and reveal all of your remaining cards. And make sure that in your remaining cavern cards, there is at least one kind of each orb. So these are all the cards you're going to need to trap your dragon, only this time you can see them so you can plan a little bit more. This time when you activate an orb, you're going to place one gem on the orb and another one on the dragon. Shackles. If you are able to use all of your cards to light up each of the orbs on the dragon, then you've done it. You have trapped the dragon and you are amazing. A nice challenge that makes this game way more difficult are the treasure cards. You have riches, magic, and battle cards. If you are able to activate two orbs on all three cards of one type, then you get special perks. For example, if you activate the riches, you get additional treasure to your final score. If you get all three magical elements, you can remove an orb from a creature during phase one, or you can add an orb to the dragon in phase two. My favorite though, if you activate all three battle cards, then you get to draw an extra cavern card in phase two when you really need it. No matter how well or poorly you do, you're gonna have the opportunity to rate yourself as the rule book gives you different titles, treasure bonuses, and a scoring table. If I had to offer any advice on the best way to play this game, I would say get really good at making crystal clusters, a set of crystals that you could just keep mooching off of. And how big can you make your crystal cluster to get the most bang out of your buck or out of your crystals? At least that's what my current self-inflicted challenge is. So like I said, this is a solo game for ages eight and up. It plays in about 20 to 30 minutes. It took me a little bit longer the first time, but I freed the dragon on my first try. 
And then I lost like a whole bunch of times after that. But if this game interests you, then please check out their Kickstarter link. It's below and I'll see you all next time. Bye.